Hey friends, this is Brian from This Is Tech Today, and I know a lot of you have been asking me about tempered glass screen protectors for the Pixel 2 XL, and there are a lot of bad ones out there, but I finally found a good one, and it's from Whitestone Dome Glass. So let's look at the installation process real quick, and then we'll also compare the Whitestone Dome Glass to the typical screen protector out there. We'll check out the fit and finish, as well as the oleophobic coating, and how it fits with other cases that are out there. Since it uses a liquid adhesive, you do need to make sure that your surface is level. You don't want the adhesive to move over to one side or the other unexpectedly. I would suggest using an iron to steam the area since it'll pull down any dust in the air, which ends up making the insulation process easier if you do this. Step two is to turn off your phone. Having any sort of vibration when you're installing the protector can create issues. Step three, clean your device. There's a cleaning pad and then there's a microfiber cloth to dry it off. Step four, place the absorption pads on both sides to catch any adhesive that may leak out when you're installing the protector. Step five, there are two stickers, one for the top speaker and one for the bottom speaker. There are some cutouts in the sticker that lines up with some areas on the tray, which really helps out. Put the top tray on. There are little nubs and cutouts, so it fits in one way only. Insert the tab, which is where the top part of the screen protector rests on. Step seven, place the bridge on the tray. Unscrew the yellow cap from the adhesive locker glue and screw it in. Step eight, unscrew the black cap to release the adhesive. Step nine, take the protective film off the screen protector and place the bottom of the protector at the bottom of the tray and then the top, which has the extra sensor cut out on the top tab. Step 10, push down the bottom corner of the tray to move the adhesive to the middle of the screen and then pull the top tab. Wait for the adhesive to spread to the edge of the entire protector. Step 11, place the UV light on the top and then the bottom sections of the protector for 15 seconds each. Step 12, clean the protector. Step 13, place the UV light on the top and bottom sections of the protector for a second time, but for 60 seconds each. So the insulation process is definitely very overwhelming. There's a lot to it and it was kind of scary at first, but after you do it one time, it will be a lot easier again. And I'm thankful that they have that tray and those different little tabs and things like that because insulation ends up being really easy despite all the things you have to do. Because of that, the protector aligns perfectly every time and there's no bubbles because it's a full adhesive protector. So let's compare the fit and finish and the oleophobic coating as well as check out some cases. First, I sprayed screens with water to see how I'd handle it. Surprisingly enough, the typical screen protector reveals the gap between the protector and the screen in a very extreme way. These type of protectors have adhesive on the edge which creates this air gap and it causes a rainbow effect and it requires a dot matrix in order to register touches. It looks terrible and touch sensitivity dramatically decreases. I used that type of protector for a week just to have an informed understanding of what this typical protector is like and it was miserable. So far I haven't had any issues with the touch sensitivity on the dome glass. It's really just operating like the original glass and the deep blacks of the OLED panel are there. And that's because there's no gap because it's a full adhesive protector. And interestingly enough, I didn't really notice any quality difference on the front facing camera on any of them. The second test on the oleophobic coating uses moisturizing eye drops. Of course, the naked screen was awesome with the droplets quickly rolling off. The typical screen protector was fairly slow, which means it's not a very smooth surface. The coating's just not good. And then the white zone dome glass looks pretty much the same as the original glass, which lines up with how the protector feels in comparison to the original glass. The edge of the protector is rounded, but it doesn't go all the way to the edge. And this is kind of a bummer because the box does state that it's a full protector, but it isn't. And because of that, when you roll your thumb over from the edge over to the protector, you will feel that bump. But I imagine most of you, if you're putting on a tempered glass screen protector, you're probably using a case as well. And when you use a case, you won't notice this edge at all. So speaking of cases, let's find out how this protector works with some of the cases I had around. So on the Rinke bevel case, it's decent. There are no issues with the edges because there's a small gap between the protector and the case. The bad part is that the edge lip that protects the screen from direct contact to a particular service is, well, not really there. The protector essentially negates it. The Rinke Fusion is pretty much the same thing, a normal gap on the edge with a lip that is largely canceled out. The Spigen Ruggen Armor has a bit of a smaller gap between the protector and the edge and has the biggest edge lip out of all of these. This one is the one to get if you need that edge lip, which I personally prefer. 
The moment case has a typical gap on the edges with the edge lip that is kind of a middle ground between the edge lip of the rinke cases and the speaking cases. And then there's some sort of rumor out there saying that this doesn't really work with the Otterbox Defender case, but I don't know that for sure. Can any of you confirm that? So what are your thoughts? What are your observations? Are you thinking of getting one of these? I've tried out quite a few tempered glass screen protectors and they all have that same edge adhesive kind of style and they're just bad. And this one is a full adhesive one that feels great and it's by far the best one I've found so far. So if you'd like to get your hands on it, I'll have some links down below in the description for both the Pixel 2 XL and then the Pixel 2. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out as a small YouTuber. And while you're down there, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'd love to talk to you down in the comments, so let's hang out down there. I really want to thank Whitestone Dome Glass for sending this out to check out. I reached out to them, and the fact that they even responded to me and were willing to provide this so that I can create this installation guide and this review for you is really cool. This is a testament to the growth that the channel has had, and that's all thanks to you guys. Thanks for watching it. Thanks for liking it. Thanks for subscribing and commenting and then some of you are even helping me out on Patreon, so I really thank you for that. And as always, I will provide an honest review, even if they've given me the product for free or they sponsored the video. It will always be an honest review. Thanks again for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.